I respect your time, so let's get right into it. This video is about the new Slime World Wonderland event that's basically a cross collaboration between the anime, I got reincarnated as a slime, and Ragnarok X Next Generation. So now, this is my first impression of the event, and I'm making this video to actually get ideas from you guys about how to best utilize this event as a free to play player. Now, I have some ideas on my own, but I believe a lot of my viewers are actually very value oriented, so hopefully, we can all learn from one another after this video. I believe this entire event revolves around two currency, the Wonderland Gold Coin as well as the Wonderland Silver Coin. Now you basically take these two currencies and exchange it for rewards. So the two questions that I'm going to answer in this video is, number one, what are the rewards? Are they worth it? And number two, how do we get these two coins? Now firstly, let's find the rewards. Where is it? So based on the coin itself, you are supposed to exchange for items you like at the Shunas Exchange Shop. Now, where is the Shuna Exchange Shop? If you actually click on the Shuna NPC in Prontera, you will be brought to this NPC here, and it doesn't show you anything. Now, clicking on the slime icon pops up the event UI, and the main crux of this entire thing is basically a board game. So go to the blue Rimuru icon, and click Go to go to the board game. Now, you can see a preview of the board game from this video here. So if you click Glow, you will be brought to the board game, and you will notice that at the bottom left hand corner, there's a dice icon. Clicking on it will open up a page where you can purchase a bunch of rigged dice. Now, we will talk about the potential of this later. Let's first find Shuna's exchange shop. Turns out that it's actually a spot on the board. If you don't land on this spot, you are not able to access Shuna's exchange shop. But don't worry, I got you. Now, I am sure some keen-eyed players have already noticed some extremely high-value rewards. I'm going to give my thoughts purely from a free-to-play perspective. Now, you have a bunch of outfits and costumes that you can change for, but based on the wardrobe, there are no attributes or stats tied to the costumes and outfits. I have not checked through all of them, so I left it as a question mark. It's just an aesthetic question mark. Now, in the gold coin rewards, I'm looking at the pet slime cage. It is basically a PvP damage reduction pet. Pretty cool. It costs about 120 gold coins and currently has a crystal value of about 150,000 crystals. Now, I have spent way more than 150,000 crystals to catch a pet, so this value is pretty good. Now, let's continue. I will skip all the aesthetics because they have no stats, and the gold cards are really, really OP, and it's basically summoning Exodia if you can obtain all three of them, but as a free to play, I don't even bother. The blue cards, however, Holy moly, those are some insane cuts. Now, all the blue cuts cost about 240 coins each, which is approximately 300k crystal value currently in my server. Here is a comparison between stats and values based on prices in my server for the blue cuts. So let's look at the three defensive cuts first. We have the Diablo card, which is basically max HP 8% with HP regen. This has a crystal value of about 300k currently versus a very popular Sasquatch card which is 12% max HP. So basically you lose 4% max HP but it's about half the price. Next we have the Xion card which is final physical defense and magic defense 4% each which is a total of 8% worth of stats compared to 12% max HP. Once again 600k versus 300k. And lastly we have Ranga card, final physical and magic damage reduction, total amount of stats is 8% versus another max HP 12% card, which is about 550k. So I personally have no idea whether defense or damage reduction is as good as max HP. I cannot give you a quantifiable conclusion, but this is literally the comparison between stats and value. Now let's look at the attack cards. Wow, this one is insane. So for the Marine Sphere card, it's one of the most expensive accessory cards. It's basically 6% final damage bonus for 500k in my server versus the Shuna card, which is 8% physical attack. 8% worth of stats is cheaper than 6% worth of stats here. 8% worth of physical attack is only 300k, whereas 6% P damage bonus is 500k. Now, I'm not going to compare between which one is more effective in your damage output because it's based, it's based on your class anyway, but based purely on stats and value, you can see that Shuna card is insane. 
Now we look at Benny Maru card. Final P damage bonus 8%. It's a head gear card. We compare directly apple to apple. We have the Maduk card, which is also a head gear card. It gives you only 6% final P damage bonus. Maduk is currently 500k in my server. Benny Maru is only 300k. For 2% more stats, it's cheaper by 200k. So there's so much value here. Now, next we have the Shizue card. Now, I've, I didn't find anything that I can compare it to, but basically crit damage bonus 16% for 300k. Sounds good. Now, personally, I might be going for at least one defensive card from the Gold Coin Rewards, as well as hopefully getting two offensive cards from the Silver Coin Rewards. Both Benimaru and Shuma looks freaking OP. 8% attack for 300k, 8% P damage bonus for 300k is some insane value. Or maybe it's just too insane for me because Maduk and Marine Sphere has been 500k for the longest time. So the fact that we are getting more stats for cheaper value, I can honestly tell you a little bit of blood just rushed out. So the fact that I have something that gives me more stats at a cheaper price is just so much, uh, so much value. <laughs> now, of course, we all know that these prices are not going to last. Maybe the whales will buy up all the silver coins and gold coins to summon Exodia with the gold cards. Now, if the prices fall, that will be insane value for the free-to-play players. If the prices go up, how much am I willing to pay for 8% attack or 8% P damage bonus? Probably close to 500k or 600k, at least on par with Maduk and Marine Sphere, right? Now, that would be a valuation of approximately 2,000 crystals to 2,500 crystals per coin. Now, currently in my server, the pre-order price is about 1.2k per coin, and I'm willing to actually bid for it all the way up to maybe 2k. Now, so we answered the first question, are the rewards worth it? I feel that some of the rewards are really worth it. So the next question is how to get the coins. Since this is a first impression video, I am pretty sure I will miss out some ways and if I do, please let me know in the comment section. Now the first way is to pre-order from the exchange. As you can see, I successfully managed to pre-order 25 silver coins at about 1k to 1.1k. Now like I mentioned earlier, I'm willing to pay up to 2k per coin because that's how much I value these coins and based on the rewards that I actually want. So first way is to pre-order from the exchange. Second way is to buy with money, which is out of my scope of discussion. You can also get free coins as rewards if your server has completed Wonderland Adventure a total of 100 times. Now, the third way is to play the board game. Now, you don't just anyhow play the board game. I feel that there's a particular strategy here that you can use. We will talk more about that later. And the fourth way is to hunt Storm Dragon MVP for gold coins. And you can hunt Orc Disaster Mini for the silver coins. So when we look at the board game, I actually plan to utilize all the different types of rig dice to try and step on as many mini games or treasure chests as possible. So instead of just spamming normal dice randomly, I will only use the normal dice when there is nothing useful in the six spaces in front of me. Since I value each coin at around 1002 crystals to about 2000 crystals, spending the crystals to buy the rig dice is technically more reliable than praying for a pre-order. Now, I will do an update in my community tab in the future to see how many coins I can get per mini game and whether it's worth gambling for it. Now, let's give it a try now. Now, currently, my character is four spaces away from the mini game. It costs 1,500 crystals to buy this angel dice, which can get me random numbers from four to six, which is a 33% chance of getting four. Or I can spend 3,000 crystals for a 100% chance to play the mini game. So let's see what happens. So as you can see, I spent 3,000 crystals to land on the minigame spot. I anyhow play and I got 4 coins for it. In other words, it's about 750 crystals per gold coin. And if I'm not wrong, the maximum number of coins you can get from the minigame is 5. So at 5 coins per minigame, spending 3,000 crystals to get the remote control dice, you're only spending about 600 crystals per gold coin. As compared to the pre-order price of about 1,200. And since I do intend to go for some rewards, I will spend the next few days figuring out all the mini games and how to play the mini games effectively to get the max number of coins. Now, furthermore, if you go to your daily bot quest, there's actually a second tab of dailies that give you random dice gift box as a reward, 
which means you can definitely land on some mini games for free. All right, that's it for me. What do you guys think? Is this event free to play friendly? Are the gold Exodia cards too powerful? Are there better ways to get the coins? I personally have a few cards that I definitely want to get. So do let me know in the comment section if there is a better way or if I left anything out. Leave a like if I saved you some time to find the Shunai Exchange Shop. The link to the spreadsheet is in the description below. If you like videos that bring value to your gameplay and help you stay ahead of the free-to-play curve, subscribe. Most of the time, I will update my community tab when I make any changes or updates to the spreadsheet. So do turn on notifications because there are going to be tons of updates for the event. As always, outplay, not outpay. Bye!